Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. I've had a bunch of customers ask me what boring bars I end up using. Um, I even have a bunch of them ask me, they're thinking about getting a machine, what should they get? Um, I also rebuild boring bars. So, at the moment, I don't know, I think there's six or seven bars here at the moment. One, two. This is a small, quick way. So that's three, four, five. Here's another bar I'm rebuilding. Six, seven, and there's number eight. So I deal a lot with boring bars. Um, the two main manufacturers are Quickway and Van Norman. So This is a Quickway FT machine. It's an older boring bar. Great machine. I do tons of cylinders on it. One of the better old machines you can buy. It's a Van Norman 777S4. One of my favorite machines ever built. It's the machine you can basically take the deepest cut. You know, you could take easily three millimeters in a pass if you wanted to on this bar. If you're fixturing is strong enough of course because when you mount a cylinder you can only remove as much as the cylinder will hold the way it's held you know you don't want to put so much cutting pressure that the cylinder starts moving and you end up with a crazy bore so I figured in this video I would go through the differences and a couple of the different bars I have a few quick way bars here I have a Van Norman bar, and I have a Widea bar, which is a Japanese copy, and show you the differences in the bars so you know what to look for. So we'll start off with a Quickway FT, which most Quickway machines operate the same. So there are three feet at the bottom of the machine that there's a knob at the top that you rotate this knob. And let's see, as you tighten it, it's tight all the way. Let me push it in. So the way these work is, let's see, as, I don't know if you can see that opening up, but as you screw this, these open. So what you end up doing is you drop this in the hole, you open it, which centers it, and then with this screw, you lock it down. So basically what you'd end up doing you loosen the machine. See if we can do this with one hand. It's a little bit tricky. Drop it in the hole. And then you open this up till it's centered. And then you lock this screw down. Now, after you lock this screw down, you'd raise the bar back up. And after the bar is raised, you rotate it around, you open this port. This is the micrometer port. So now you take a cutter. Most of the cutters I use are indexable, and there's a few different ones. These are all made by Beam Equipment. Um, Lacey Williams also makes so similar ones and each one does a different thing. So this is a standard boring cutter. This is a blind counter bore cutter. So if you're going into a blind hole, you know, when this tool is in here, if you notice the cutters here, the bottoms down here. So if the hole stops, you have an issue. So using this type of cutter, you know, on a set of two stroke cases, if you want to bore them for big bore sleeves, something like that, you could use this and this goes past the bottom. So you would have clearance to do so. The other tool I regularly use is this, which is a counter bore tool for stepping for sleeves, stuff like that. So this machine's a perfect flat wherever you're machining. Another great tool that's a necessity. 
but if you're going to bore a hole with this machine you'd put the cutter in and they're spring loaded there's this little spring base that you can adjust and then what you end up doing is you'll take set the micrometer so this is the micrometer for the machine you'd set it whatever size you want to cut it you set it in you make sure that when it's all the way in there's still movement and then you just tighten this down tighten this allen wrench down and you're ready to cut and that's how you size a quick way and set one up which is a, a great method of doing it. Now, on a Van Norman, they're similar but different. So a Van Norman, instead of using those little, those three little feet, they use what's called cat's paws. So a Van Norman actually uses four of them. So they're these four little feet, one at every 90 degrees. And that is what actually centers it in the bore. So you drop it down, same like the other machine. Just this one instead of on the top, like the quick way on the Van Norman, it's right here. So you'd rotate this knob until it locks and centers the bore. And then you have this to tighten and lock the machine down. Works great. All right, so this is the cat paw assembly on the Van Norman. Most of the Van Normans use this setup. The one thing that Van Norman does differently than all the rest is this setup. Most of them use three fingers. So even Rottler, which I don't have one of their bars here, they use three fingers that are on the base. The nice thing with this setup, the way Van Norman designed it, is when you get inside the bore so you start boring you bore up to this deep then what they tell you to do is to actually push these cat paws up against the bore which then supports it for extra long holes on two stroke cylinders you can't do it because these will end up getting trapped in the ports and cause all kinds of havoc but when you have a solid bore, it's great because you could do one, a very, very big hole and the bar is completely supported on the four cap paws. Or two, you can do an extremely long hole and the hole is not going to wander because it's going to keep rested on this and you can take an extremely deep cut. So if you look right here on the manual, this is kind of the easiest way it shows you where if you look, it's showing you, you know, the right way. Don't engage it too early because you can bind it. So this is the one thing that the Van Norman, the 777, um, and the 944, even the, the 900, and uh, I believe the 999 even, which is a huge boring bar. I've never personally had my hands on one of them. So, but... That kind of shows you, it's the one thing that Van Norman does differently, which makes it a, a beefier bar when it's cutting. If you're doing uh, a four-stroke cylinder that doesn't have ports. So, but either way, they, they both work out great. Quickway, Van Norman, Widea, Rottler, they all make great bars. It really comes down to budget. I found in general... The Van Norman bars, the standard 777S or the 944S, you know, are cheaper than most of the Quickway stuff. You get this bar, which is the S4. These get expensive because it's a four-speed bar and you can take massively deep cuts with it. So, but you're really not going to go wrong depending on what you're looking to, to do with the bar in your own shop. The other difference with the Van Norman bars is instead of mounting the micrometer in the machine and setting the tool, you actually set the tool on the micrometer like this, and then you just push the tool in the machine loaded at size. The nice thing with this is it's really, really easy to have every single hole 
exactly the same size. Um, as long as you clean the chips out and stuff. The quick way is the same way as long as you clean the chip out. out. It's just a different way of doing it. As I said before, the nice thing with this machine, this is a completely gear-driven machine. The S4 is the four-speed version. They also make just the standard S or just the 777. So on the Van Norman bars, when you see them, so the common bars, or most common, I should say, are the 944 and the 777. Then there's the S versions, which all that means is it was designed for suction. If you notice this little hole, so you can actually connect a vacuum to this to suck out the chip so you can actually bore an engine that's still together the quick way is the same way there's actually this port right here to do the same thing the van norman non s machines don't have that capability and the tool and micrometer is actually different but still the same great machine both of them are phenomenal machines for the money. Um, the next machine we'll go look at is this is a newer Quickway. So this is a Quickway FN. It's basically the same as the Quickway FT machine. The only main difference with this one is that FT is a two speed machine. This is a four speed. So this is variable speed oh actually no this is a two speed two feed machine i'm sorry so the other quick way ft that i have here is just high and low this machine is high low and then high feed low feed nice extra option awesome machine it's got the same cutting dimensions as the ft so it's a, a very, very similar machine. It uses the same feet as most Quickways do. And a similar style micrometer. Let's not drop that. And then another bar we have here. This is a Wadia, which is also a great machine. It's kind of a, a mix between both, more or less. So it uses three feet like Quickway does. This machine is a gear driven machine instead of a belt. So all Quickways, these covers cover two belts. There, there's two drive belts on the top of, I believe all Quickways, which drives them. The Van Normans end up using gears. This kind of copies that gear train, but also works great and then this machine uses a slightly different style cutter and then a micrometer that mounts and wraps around so there's another older company um, called storm that they built some older boring bars that their micrometer was very similar to this style so you just put it in just like the quick way on a spring You'd set the micrometer to whatever you want it at. You drop the micrometer on. You'd set it to size. And then lock it down. So, and then, you know, when you end up looking at the tool kits, these are all the different feet, the different cutters. On the quick ways, these are the different feet for centering it you got to be careful when you're looking at a boring bar if you're looking to buy one if it's missing these on quick way you can rebuy them but they're like almost 200 dollars a set van norman same thing you can find them used for you know 150 or 200 bucks a set or new for i think they're like 400 dollars a set for the van and then some other bars like this Wadia bar, if you're missing anything, the odds of you finding anything for it are slim to none, or you're going to pay through the nose for it. So what I tell people is if you're looking to buy a boring bar, make sure that you're buying one 
that's got a complete toolkit or don't buy it because a lot of times people say, oh, I got this great deal on a boring bar. I bought it for 500 bucks. I bought a quick way for 500 bucks. How much is the toolkit for it? And then I tell them the toolkits, $1,500. They're like, oh, well, I could buy one for two grand. It's like, yeah, well, of course. These machines came with one toolkit. There aren't many extra toolkits and the ones that are around you're going to pay for. So make sure you end up buying one with the toolkit, with everything you need. Look through it. Make sure it doesn't look like in the toolkit there's missing areas because in general, if there's a missing area, there's a reason for it. I can show you over here the Van Norman. So this is a Van Norman toolkit. Um, this is for my machine, so there's a lot of extra stuff. But, you know, these feet are in the machine right now. These are all the different cat's paws that it comes with. One of my extra micrometers, different cutters, stuff like that. So when you're getting a toolkit, make sure it looks like everything's in it. Because if it's not, it's going to cost you a whole bunch of money. Or, worst case scenario, you're not going to be able to use the machine. So these machines are designed to be used with the toolkit. Without the toolkit, the machine's basically worthless. If you don't have the different size cutters, you can't make the different size cuts. If you don't have the micrometer, you can't figure out what size you're about to bore something for. And the tolerances you're boring to are really tight. So it's not like, ah, well, I'll just put it in and it'll kind of be good. There's, there's no kind of good with this stuff. It's all dead nuts. So the last bar, which this is kind of the weird one of the bunch, it's one of the very few boring bars... This is called the Quickway Colt. I'm actually in the process of rebuilding this machine at the moment. This is a machine I bought for myself. So this is a weird bar because it's actually air-powered. It's basically the smallest boring bar that Quickway ever made. It goes down to one and three-eighths. So it's really meant for very, very small bores. Um, so it's an air feed up and down. It uses the same three centering feet. So if you notice, I push them in and then there's a top thing on top that pushes them out, which centers it in the hole. Then you tighten this on top, which pushes this plate and locks it up here. And then it's got this centering piece. These are known to be finicky machines, unless you know how to set them up properly. Beam Equipment also makes a positive rate cutter for them. So which is this cutter. Um, which makes everything a lot easier. And of course, it's not very focused, but it is what it is. So that shows you the two major manufacturers and one other, you know, Quickway, Van Norman, and the different things to look for. So when you're looking at them, you want to look at the columns in good shape. So this is consider the column. You want to make sure everything moves freely. When you go to touch something, it doesn't, you don't want it to be locked up. These are precise pieces of equipment. A lot of the parts on a lot of these machines are still made, but they're really expensive. So, like this machine's completely rebuilt. It's basically as good as new. It's one of my main machines. This machine is in the process of being rebuilt. So the Quickway FT that's over here, uh, sorry, FN, that green machine was recently re rebuilt and the Wadia is getting ready to be rebuilt. So, and then the last Quickway that was the first one I showed you, this one I just finished rebuilding and it's basically as good as new. So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Thanks for checking it out. Hope you guys liked the video. Talk to you guys soon. Have a good night.